Council will now consider draft proposal L2 Rev 1 entitled Protection Against Violence and Discrimination Based on Sexual Orientation and Gender Identity. Excellency, this is the last attempt to make the main sponsor understand the fatal implication that will result from the consideration of this polarizing and deeply devices proposal that does not realize the cultural differences and the diverse system that exists between our countries. This is an initiative that might incur irreversible damage to the future of the Human Rights Council. We call on the main sponsors to reconsider their decision to present this draft resolution. I have therefore informed the core group of the draft resolution that the OIC shall not be able to support this initiative and especially would not be able to support an independent ex expert for a concept that has not yet been adopted by any universal intergovernmental negotiated treaty or convention. L76 highlights that any interference in domestic debates and national dialogues, particularly in on issues characterized with historical, cultural, social and religious sensitivities, can have negative effects. L77 underlines the importance of avoiding external pressures and respecting domestic debates on issues of high sensitivity. Mr. President, OIC's amendments are a sincere attempt to advance global efforts against violence and discrimination while preventing these genuine endeavors from being taken hostage to the promotion of certain notions and concepts and lifestyles on which there is no consensus. Islam has known the uh, true meaning of human rights 1,400 years uh, ago, Mr. President. Now, if the special procedures which are being requested by the author were to be set up, this would be the first special procedures of the Human Rights Council, which would be set up by a vote in conditions of confrontation and polarization. President? The authors of the resolution wish to set up a monitoring mechanism with unclear powers and an unclear, unclear terms of reference, which would be tracking the uh, human rights of a group of people not defined in international law. Mr. President seeks to establish an independent expert, not just to monitor violence, but to also monitor discrimination based on sexual orientation and gender identity. Concepts that are vague, undefined, and have no basis in international law. Who will determine which, what constitutes discrimination when nations are deeply divided on these issues and where there is no international consensus? Will laws protecting marriage or single gender bathroom used, use be considered discrimination? Also, how can such an expert monitor or report on violence against persons based on their sexual attraction or interior gender identities, especially when Facebook, for example, recognizes at least 70 different genders? Acts of violence, regardless of against whom they are directed, are carefully investigated by competent authorities in Russia and those who are responsible are brought to justice. The government in taking measures to combat violence and discrimination to an equal extent protects all citizens without any hierarchy and helps everybody to the same extent. Mr. President, the Rus Russia believes that sexual orientation is an element of private life of a, of a separately taken individual and uh, one cannot interfere in this. This is a deeply individual choice uh, according to one's models and particular relationships which does not lead to the need for the creation of any specific conditions for the implementation of such a choice. 
a particular system of protection for those who take this particular choice. At international law and in Russia, in the human rights level, is extended in air, all areas under its jurisdiction with respect to women, to el the elderly, to people with disabilities, homosexuals, teachers, or, or astronauts, young people, or representatives of national or religious minorities. And what we see today, sir, is a small group of countries where it would appear the level uh, of uh, private life is extremely approximate are suggesting that we set up a separate legal regime for protecting uh, for protection of those who take a choice for a certain model of personal relationships we will refrain from any comments with respect to whether this choice is a natural one we will simply note that many thousands of years of human development were carried out without though by those who did not have this kind of a choice sponsors have sought to build on the south african initiative of 2011 has added divisive dimensions and created unnecessary acrimony in this council the approach is building maximum consensus this could have been achieved had it not been for the arrogant and confrontational approach adopted. Mr. President, there is an African proverb that says, if you want to walk fast, then walk alone. If you want to walk far, walk together with others. South Africa remains firmly committed to investing all its resources to ensuring that violence and discrimination against LGBTI persons is eradicated, leaving no one behind. Grandstanding, recklessness, brinkmanship and point scoring will not take us anywhere. Lives are at stake. It is for these reasons that while we have supported those parts of this resolution which focus primarily on discrimination, on, on ending violence and discrimination against uh, LGBTI persons, South Africa cannot support this resolution as it stands. It must be noted, however, that at, at international level, and within international law, there's no agreed definition or acceptance of the use of the terminology on sexual orientation and gender identity as discussed under the current resolution. It is in fact a concept that is still developing even at international levels. The reason that we are still at this stage takes into consideration the fundamental importance of respecting the relevant domestic debates on matters associated with historical, cultural, social, and religious sensitivities. State that the government of Namibia is opposed to any violence against individuals based on their sexual orientation and gender identity. We have repeatedly stated that such acts are prohibited and punishable by our domestic criminal laws, and there is no single case reported to the authorities alleging persecutions of LGBT people in Namibia. Article 10 of the Namibian Constitution states that all persons shall be equal before the law and no persons may be discriminated against on the grounds of sex, race, color, ethnic origin, religion, creed, or social or economic status. LGBT persons in Namibia are allowed to participate in government services and live freely like any other citizens in the country. The fact that there is no binding international instrument guiding us in the field of international human rights law which provides us with an agreed definition of sexual orientation and gender identity poses a legal lacuna for us. This same lacuna exists with regards to an instrument which establishes rights based on sexual orientation or gender identity. In the absence of international human rights law which guides our work in the Council, what instrument will guide the independent expert when assessing our compliances as states? We are concerned about the mandate of the independent expert sought to be established by this resolution as this mandate will be allowed to interfere in sensitive issues at national level. Against this background, Namibia abstains from voting on this resolution. I thank you. The results of the recorded vote are as follows. 23 in favor, 18 against, 6 abstentions. Draft resolution L2 slash Rev 1 as amended is therefore adopted.